Hello guys, I am taking a look at the RPG manual, the RPG Bible up in here, and I just realized something. Am I a fraud? Am I an RPG fraud? Because there are certain RPGs that are just considered classics and I haven't even played them. And not gonna lie, I feel like a fraud when someone asks me, Hey, have you played this game or that game? And I'm just like, no. I'll see myself out the door kind of vibe. I'm going to share with you all the games that are considered classics that I still haven't played in hopes that I pick them up and play them soon. So this video is kind of like a therapy session on, hey, focus, play these games. So feel free to mock me in the comments down below or to let me know what classic RPG you haven't played. So hopefully I'm not alone in this boat. Now the first pick is part of the intimidation category and that is the trail series. Now I've said before in previous videos that I really wanted to get into the trails games and I do, but it's kind of intimidating, mostly because it's an overarching story that spans I don't know how many games and the story is important so you're gonna want to play these games in order but I really want to get into the series. I've been hearing nothing but praise, I've seen people post pictures or excited for the new release coming out and I want to be part of that hype but I know that there's a lot of games that I'm missing. I'm missing like 100% of the games. I've only played a little of Trails from Zero. To say this series is intimidating is an understatement, for me at least. I know the people who are in the series or are catching up probably don't feel the same way, but I've never started. And I keep telling myself, I'm gonna get into it, I'm gonna get into it, but I never get into it. The entire series has a total of 11 games and it's only getting bigger because Trails Through Daybreak is coming out very, very soon this year. So I should probably start. Maybe if I start the first game and beat it, that'll give me the drive to go further and further into the series. A lot of people in the Kaseki community always say just pick a game and dive right in and then you could pick up the pieces another time. Which is probably good advice because there's so many games on so many different platforms with so many different gameplay styles and so many different characters. Maybe I should just pick a game and stick with it. Needless to say, I should just jump in Go head on. <laughs> I'm just gonna pick one randomly from a box or something and see which one I get. You know, that's a good idea. Now the next one is kind of a surprise. A lot of people ask me and I always say, no, I've never played it. Let me go hide my head in shame. And that is for Chrono Trigger. Yes, I've never played the JRPG darling that is Chrono Trigger. I feel like I did a crime or something. Right to jail, right away. Every time I say that, I feel like a total fraud when it comes to JRPGs because I've never played the classic, the beloved, the masterpiece, one of the best RPGs of all time. I have never played it. For this case, it's more because accessibility. I was hoping that they would port it to the Switch and I'm still waiting for a Switch copy, but they haven't done that yet. The only ways you could play Chrono Trigger is through the 3DS if you have it, or PC. Now I do have a Steam Deck, which yeah, it does make it easier, but it would have been so much greater if it was on the Switch. Now, if it was a remake, that would be fantastic. Now, if you know my luck, I have been known for picking up games to stream and then to realize that a remake was announced after picking up that game. That's happened to me with Persona 3 Portable and Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. And that's another reason I've been kind of holding it off. The game is just ripe for a remake. It wants to be remade or at least support. So my best option is to play it on the PC. If you want me to stream it, then let me know. It'll kind of be weird because I never really stream PC games. But jokes aside, Chrono Trigger is a short RPG that gets straight to the point, has minimal grinding. And might I add, it sucks so much that the second game in the series is on the Switch, but not the first? Like, hello? You're kind of missing the first game, the masterpiece, the one that started it all. And I know that there's different developers and publishers and doing stuff like that, but honestly, can we just have both of the games on one console? Is that too much to ask? Now, the next game on this list is one that I want to get into. It's just I never really found the time to get into. And that is Final Fantasy IX. So I've been trying to be all the Final Fantasy games. So far, I have beaten Final Fantasy VI, Final Fantasy VII, 10 1 and 10 2, Final Fantasy 13, 13 1, 13 2, and 13 3, Type 0, which is my favorite. It's not a mainline Final Fantasy game, but to me it is. Final Fantasy 15 and Final Fantasy 16. Now, for Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, I don't know if I'm ever gonna get to them. I don't really like uh, retro games like that. And now, as you could tell, Final Fantasy 8 and 9 
Fine are excluded because I just never got around to playing them. But I specifically want to get Final Fantasy IX mainly because when the review scores for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth came out, it was very, very high. But it wasn't the first game. No, the first game was Final Fantasy IX. And I was just like, I, I kind of want to play IX. Now, I do have the game on my Switch, so there's really no excuse why I haven't played it. It's just because other games came up and it just wasn't on my radar and I keep forgetting, but now I am not gonna forget. Now there's something to be said about how unique Final Fantasy IX is because seven and eight kind of focused on modern technology, whereas nine, it went back to a more fantasy style Final Fantasy game and that's pretty cool. Now I haven't played eight mostly because of the controls and how clunky they are. I'm gonna get to it eventually, but I really wanted to focus on Final Fantasy IX. Though a thought did cross my head like, what if I play Final Fantasy IX and then they announce a remake? That would suck. I don't think they're gonna do a remake because they're still stuck on 7. So all that being said, once I'm in the mood to pick up another Final Fantasy game, it's definitely going to be Final Fantasy IX. Now I do have this one RPG quirk about me. I don't like to play games of the same series back to back to back. It burns me out really really fast. And I guess that's kind of why the Kaseki series or the Trail series is really intimidating because there's a lot of games back to back to back to back. So I tend to just play one, put it on hold, and then play the next, and so on and so forth. Now I do know people who love to binge a game series, but yeah, that's not me. So next on this list, is Golden Sun. Funny enough, for the longest time, I thought Golden Sun was a shooter because I got it mixed up with GoldenEye. So every time someone said Golden Sun, I'm like, oh, it's the shooter one. Why is it an RPG? Now, like most games on this list, I definitely have no excuse on why I haven't gotten around to play it. I mean, I did have a Game Boy Advance growing up, though I didn't really play RPGs on my Game Boy Advance, so that's probably why I was too busy with my Mario and Luigi's and stuff like that. I had no standards growing up, it's a shame. But in our year of 2024, Nintendo has put Golden Sun on the NSO. But like I said before, this game has no excuses why I haven't played it. The main excuse is I'm just not in the mood for it. Next on this list is Sudoken. Suikoden. Ah! Grant, no! Are you okay? I hear grandma calling me. Now this game I've heard of a lot. For the longest time, this game never crossed my path until another game got announced that is called Illudian Chronicles. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Which is the spiritual successor of the Sudoken series. Now I do know the Sudoken series right now, but when I was growing up, I knew nothing about it. Mainly because I never grew up with the PlayStation. Luckily though for me, the first two games in the series are getting remastered for modern consoles, which is amazing and I can't wait to play them. The next game on this list is kind of like the first an intimidation factor, and that is Trails of Anything. Trails of Symphonia, Trails of Visteria, Bisteria. Hey y'all, it's Editing Mandy here. I said Trails, but I mean Tales. The only Tales game I did play was Tales of Arise, which is pretty awesome, but that's about it. I haven't played the other Tales. I do have Tales of Bisteria, and I recently ordered Trails of Symphonia because I saw it on the sale. So I have a good bunch of the Tales games, I just haven't really gotten around to playing it. The only reason that I played Tales of Arise was because the graphics looked beautiful and the gameplay looked really really fun. And it was really really fun. I enjoyed it from beginning to end. I don't know if that's the case with the other games, but for me, Tales of Arise left a really good impression on the Tales series. While not as intimidating as the Kaseki series, there is still a lot of games in the Tales series. So why haven't I played the most popular one, Tales of Symphonia? Like I said before, it's a bit of intimidation factor with the whole I have to be in the mood to play it kind of vibe. Now there is a remastered version that is out and I actually did buy it on sale for $20 so yay. But I say remaster in the worst possible way because it's one of those cases where they remastered the game but it digressed instead of progressed. Because the remaster is not the best version of the game. And funny enough, the game is 60 FPS on the GameCube but 30 on the Switch. Make that make sense because I don't know what happened there. So honestly, like many other games on this list, I have no reason as to why I haven't played it. Literally none. 
But hey, this is a video to hold me accountable to play these games. Now the last one on this list is a classic to many, many people, and that is Grandia. Now this game has been circling around for the past couple of days, especially since the PS5 version came out. And I also have to thank the creator Miss Mandia for putting my eyes on this game. But I did know of this game before watching your videos. I just never knew what this game was about. I've already said this, but as I was growing up, I was mostly a Nintendo girly and did not have a PlayStation, which is a really Real, real shame if I think about it. Though funny enough, it is now out on the Nintendo consoles, which is kind of a role reversal for a lot of these re-releases and I love to see it. The combat of the game looks like something I would love. The characters look very cute, it's nice and colorful, it looks like a very welcoming series. Plus the whole game is about adventuring in the purest sense and that is the entire goal of the main character from what I heard. He just wants to adventure just like his dad which sounds very tropey but hey I'll let it slide. It's a game of its time. So yeah I really want to play Grandia and with the releases for the PlayStation 5 and it being on the Nintendo Switch I really don't have any excuse at all. So those were all the JRPG classics that I've never played and that I want to play very very soon. I at least want to get to two or three games on this list by the time the year ends. Also feel free to tell me what RPG classics you haven't played and want to play or if you want to recommend me a game. I would love to hear it. If you like this video then hit that like for me that would appreciate it and if you love my channel and would love to see more of this content then please hit that subscribe button. You can follow me in my socials in the description down below. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of the day and as always play a good game. Peace peace.